Hi, this is Dr. Robert Lee. I'm a sports medicine physician here at Waterloo Sports Medicine Center. I'm making a series of teaching videos on physical examination of the musculoskeletal system. Our next video in the series is examination of the shoulder. I have a couple of medical students helping me out, Andrew and Laura. So here's our video on shoulder examination. Perfect. Hi there, my name is Andrew. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Laura. I'm a student working in the clinic today. Is it okay if I do a quick shoulder exam? Sure. Perfect. Okay, so to start, we'll do a general inspection. So things you're looking for are any swelling, any signs of erythema or bruising, any atrophy, or any musculoskeletal deformity. Particularly from this view, you want to look for a step de deformity at the acromial clavicular joint, which I can't appreciate here. If you could just turn around for me, you want to do the same thing from the back. Again, looking for any swelling, any signs of erythema, muscle atrophy or imbalance, or any deformity. From this view, you want to look for any signs of scapular winging, which again, I can't appreciate. That's great, you can face me now. After doing inspection, you can move on to palpation. I'd like to start with palpating the muscle first, checking for any tenderness. You can palpate the trapezius into the deltoids, and the biceps in the back the triceps. After palpating the muscles, you can move on to your bony structures. You can start with the sternoclavicular joint, into the clavicle, the acromioclavicular joint, coracoid process, greater tuberosity. I'll just get you to turn around one more time. From the back, you want to palpate the spine and the scapula. as well as the borders of the scapula and the inferior angle. Thank Great, thanks. You can turn around. After palpation, you can move on to range of motion. The first thing you want to do is assess active range of motion. Testing range of motion in the shoulder can be complicated to explain, so I like to just ask the patient to follow me. So we'll start by testing abduction. Raise our arms above our head just like this, all the way up and back down. And then reach across for adduction. Good. Next we'll go forward flexion and back down into extension. Good. If you bring your elbows to your sides, turn your fists outwards for external rotation and back in. Great. For internal rotation, we can then try to reach our hand up as high as we can on our back like this. Perfect. And switch to your other hand. That's perfect. Thanks very much. You could also assess passive range of motion, but if the patient has full active range of motion, then you don't necessarily have to. After evaluating range of motion, you can assess the strength. When you're assessing strength of the shoulder joint, always stabilize the joint with one hand. Start off with testing abduction, so I'll get you to try to lift your arm above my hand. Perfect. Relax. And then you can test adduction. So try to pull your arm in towards your body. Good. Relax. Next thing, try to pull your elbow backwards. Good and try to push your elbow forwards. Good. For internal and external rotation, have the patient hold their elbows at their sides, and don't let me push your fists inwards. Good, and don't let me push your fists outwards. Good, relax. After evaluating the strength of the shoulder joint, you can then move on to do some of the special tests. I like to start off with impingement tests. This is the Hawkins-Kennedy impingement test. A bit of internal rotation will cause pain. Any pain there? Nope. No, perfect. Then you can do the nearest test. Any pain in this position? No, perfect. To continue evaluating the rotator cuff muscles, you can do the empty can test. So we'll get you to bring your arms out in front of you, and then point your thumbs all the way at the ground. Don't let me push your arms down. Perfect, relax. Next thing you can do is the drop arm test. There's two different ways to do this test. The first way, is to passively abduct the shoulder and then ask the patient to slowly bring their arm down to their side. Any pain in this position? No. The second way to do the drop arm test is to have the patient abduct their arms to about 90 degrees and then aggressively apply a downward force. Any pain with that? No. No. A positive sign would be shown with the patient dropping their arms all the way to the side. You can also evaluate just the simple painful arc. So ask the patient to bring their arms all the way up and then all the way back down. 
assessing for pain. Any pain in that position? No. Perfect. We can then evaluate for bicepital tendonitis. The speeds test is when the patient forward flexes their arm about 90 degrees and then asks the patient to hold their arm in that position against resistance. Do you have any pain with that? No. You can also do Jurgensen's test. This is resisted supination, so ask the patient to not let you turn their hand over. Good. Any pain in that position? No. No. Perfect. Next you can evaluate the AC joint. The scarf test compresses the AC joint. Have any pain in this position? No. No? Next thing you can do is ask the patient to put the hand on their opposite glute. Again, opening the AC joint, assessing for pain. Any pain with that? No. No? Perfect. Then you can look at the stability of the shoulder joint. Or start, I'll start off with anterior posterior stability. Stabilizing the shoulder joint, grasping the head of the humerus, simply trying to translate it back and forth, looking for any laxity. You can then do the sulcus sign, looking for inferior instability. Stabilizing the opposite side, and grabbing above the elbow here. Hold down on the arm, looking for a groove forming in the deltoid. Last thing I'll get you to do is just have a seat on the bed and then lay down. This next test is the apprehension test, looking for anterior instability by externally rotating the arm. Any apprehension or discomfort indicates anterior instability. You can confirm this with a relocation test by stabilizing the shoulder joint and again externally rotating. If there's no apprehension, this is a positive test. You can then release your hand and evaluate for any recurrent apprehension, which would be a positive anterior release sign. That's perfect. That concludes the shoulder exam. You can sit up. Thanks very much. Perfect.